You're listening to I Communicate with your host, Mark Altman, on Full Service Radio, AM 830 WCRN. Once again, here's Mark. Okay, James, we're uh, we're back, and I uh, want to pick up where we left off again. And, James, last week we had a, a recently retired Major League Baseball umpire, Dale Scott, on. He was the first uh, openly gay umpire. And one of the questions I asked him was, when someone's coming out as gay, they have to make a decision, right? By internalizing it and not being able to live their identity and who they want to be, they're making a, a unilateral decision to say, that would be better than coming out. So when it comes to mental health and advocating for yourself, it's, it's a very similar situation. The stigma that you might have to deal with as a man or as a human to share your feelings and talk about your struggles and, and seek that support and accountability. How do you, James, how do, if you had a, a young person come to you and, and ask you how you would approach that decision of what's worse, what, is your thought, what are your thoughts around that, and, and how do you advise kids in that area? Yeah, it's, it's really a tough decision, and it's something that people uh, struggle with internally for quite some time. Um, but I think, you know, the choice is living a life in misery and not really being who you are. Uh, but you're projecting this, this, uh, this persona on the outside or really trying to, you know, consolidate those things and really be true to yourself and, and who you are and how you feel. Uh, you know, you have to risk that not everyone is going to approve of what you are talking about or who you've become or who you always have been. Uh, And you have to risk that, you know, but the people who fall away because they don't understand or they're not supportive, they're not empathetic enough, uh, you really don't need those people in your life anyway. Uh, They can come back when they see that, you know, maybe they feel a little more comfortable. Maybe they've had some personal growth as well. Uh, they'll, They'll come back then. But uh, my encouragement to anybody that's struggling with any kind of internal, uh, you know, dilemmas, uh, whether it's coming out or whether it's uh, talking about mental health, um, is, is find the courage. And again, this, this, this really comes from finding the confidence, someone who can, who can not judge you, who can just say, hey, I really accept you or you and who you are and what you've been through. And continue to build your courage with that person or person. I just blogged something the other day about, uh, you know, getting to mental health uh, by forming a peer group. Having a, a group of support is very important. So that's what I would encourage everyone to do. And it may take a short time. It may take years and years or decades and decades. Um, but the longer you internalize it, the longer you keep it a secret to yourself, uh, I think the less quality of life you'll be able to enjoy. And so that's my encouragement to all of, to everyone. Yeah, and you know, James, you know, one of my passions is around something I call conversation intelligence. And what I specifically mean by that is there are so many barriers to feeling comfortable sharing information. And, and, and just to go over a couple very quickly, so let's say you have a high school, college student, young adult who feels like they're ready to talk. Okay, so they, they're, they're willing, they're able, they've overcome any fears they have around it. Even if they get to those points, how to have that conversation is very difficult for people. Who to actually have it with for, yeah. without being judged is very difficult. And I think one of the major things I'm trying to, 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 cha- to solve and, and, and ideally hopefully work with you a little bit on is how to get people armed with the tools and t- strategies to know how to have those conversations. Yeah, yeah, I see. Uh, you know, one, one of the best things I did, Mark, was when I was really in the, in the depths of my despair, uh, I not only reached out to my medical professionals, but I also reached out to a small, intimate group of, of friends, uh, of people who've known me for 30 or 40 years. Uh, they know... They know James, you know, for all these years. They know how I normally am, how I normally act. And they could definitely see that I was really going through something that was really troubled. I purposely pulled together a group of men about my age uh, who had known me, uh, some businessmen, 
a couple of my old coaches, uh, Coach Lindy Wilkins, Coach George Raveling, uh, they had known me from my rookie days uh, in the NBA and George when I was at WSU. Um, some personal friends who had been through some business ups and business failures. And all of these guys came together. There was about seven or eight of them. And, and I asked each and every one of them, I said, hey, if I need someone to call at 1.30 or 2 in the morning, can I call you? And they immediately put their hands up and said, yes, put, put us on speed dial, call us anytime. And, and I mentioned to them also that, hey, I need you to call me once or twice a week just to check in on me. Not, not to want anything from me, but just to check and see how I'm feeling. Am I being overwhelmed by anything? Uh, do I have any thoughts about suicide? Check on me, please. And they did that for months and months. Um, and so that's really how I was able to get through what I was going through. Um, none of them judged me. All of them have been, have been dear friends. Uh, matter of fact, several of them shared their own personal struggles that they were going through over the years, and I had no idea, uh, which is ten, the tendency that we typically have. We have no idea what people are going through. Definitely. And so, yeah, you know, and even a couple of days ago when I posted a photo of myself and my old athletic trainer from the Sonics, uh, I had a nice big smile on my face. But behind that smile, I was depressed. I was dreary. I was, I was hurting. But I had a smile on my face in front of my friend for the camera. See? And I, and I explained to folks, I said, hey, even if you see a smile on my face, this was one of the worst days I've had in a long time. And I need you guys to be there with me and for me and to be supportive and helpful and non-judgmental. And I'd say 99% of the folks that I communicate with have been exactly that. And, and I've built an online community of a lot of folks who are following my, my, my pathway through this mental illness, mental challenge. And it's surprising how many of them share their own individual stories with me that they've gone through a similar thing. Well, and, and James, I think your advice is phenomenal because there's a technique I refer to as the elephant in the room technique. And what that is, is if you're going to share something or talk to someone about something, or if you're fearful someone's thinking something, the best way to do it is just to call it out and deal with the elephant in the room. And what you did in reaching out to those people, asking and advocating for yourself, asking if they could do that and asking if they would support you if you're worried you're a burden or if you're worried you're going to, people aren't going to be there for you, just address it so you don't have to stress and think about it. I think that's tremendous advice. That's right. That's right. And, you know, not, not to be sexist by any means, but I purposely rounded up a group of men. Uh, now, I had a lot of individual women in my life also who would check in on me on occasion. But I found that they diff- typically had a couple different strategies in mind. Uh, the guys would put together a game plan, and they'd say, okay, this is what we need to get to to get out of this. Let's go out and execute our play. Uh, the women would come in with a lot of empathy and sympathy and, uh, you know, quotes and prayers and, and all those nice things that made me feel better. But I really needed something at that time to get me through what I was going through. Uh, you know, herbal teas and scented candles and, and you know, baked cookies and goods. Those were all wonderful, and they were all welcome. I put together the guy group because I knew the guys, especially my old coaches, <laughs> who would, would put together a game plan to help me get through this thing. Well, that's tremendous, and I think you know one of the things in talking to a lot of men, especially professionally, that I find is, if I ask, James, if I ask the question, do you have someone outside a family member to go to and confide in as, an, as a support And I'd say maybe half of the men typically answer yes. But it's the second question that is, it blows me away is, but do you actually do it? Do you actually utilize them for support? And and James, honestly, it's maybe 10% of men have someone and actually utilize them for that reason. That's right. That's right. I was watching a short video on YouTube the other day about the same thing. And even though the guys were starting to feel more comfortable speaking out and letting folks know, and they acknowledged they had a group of friends or somebody they can confide in. The next question was, but would I? See? Right. And that's, that's what you have to be able to answer and feel comfortable with and move forward with. So, James, we're going to go to our last commercial and come back for one more segment. And when we come back from the break, I'd like to talk about some of the initiatives you're working on. 
and would like to uh, put you as king for a day and have if you had a magic wand and some solutions you would put in place. So uh, hang on, and we will be back with I Communicate right after the break. <laughs> 